to my channel. Today I'm going to work on the fuel line on this D2. You've been following along. We've uh, worked on a lot of the electrical system for the pony motor and the starting system and worked on a lot of the bearings that's on the accessories for the starter drive. <laughs> The, uh, when I rebuilt the pony motor, I went ahead and took care of the governor, replaced all the bearings on it, and we worked on the magneto. So this time, this is my temporary gas line that was for the fuel line so I can get the tractor started and drive it around and have a little fun with it. But it was, this is soft copper which is not a good thing to make a gas line out of. Now, hard copper, well, that's a step in the right direction. I'd really like to have some steel line like this here. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but I cannot find straight half inch diameter steel line anywhere. You can't buy it at a hardware store, a steel place, heating and cooling, internet. They all want to jump up to half inch. They want to sell you a roll of aluminum um, fuel line, which that's not going to work. So I, what I have is what the, is a hard copper line. Um, if I do it right, it should last a good long time without any problems. If I have it rubbing up against something like the fender, any of the blocks just sitting there vibrating around, it's not going to last very long. So I want to try to do this in a few different steps and kind of talk as I go along and describe what I'm doing and why I'm doing basically what I'm doing. So we'll see what happens. This ferrule, ferrule was silver soldered onto this steel pipe from the factory. And this steel pipe is all I got with the tractor. And somebody had cut it off here. The rest of this pipe's, you know, long gone. I don't know where it's at. So we had to remove this it was silver soldered so we heated it up cherry red and took a pair of pliers and pulled it right off there so now we harvested this and this is the nut that goes right here on the fuel pump i'm going to level the motor now this will help me later on when i'm trying to make the fuel line level when it runs from the fuel pump back to the bell housing area. Well, I have my, my three foot level here and it's uh, one inch wide so i'm going to check to see if the fuel pump is below above or perfectly level with this hole right here that it has to go through to completely complete its journey back to the uh, fuel tank so i'm going to check that right now and we'll see where we're at So I got the top of this level pretty much in the center of the fuel line and I'm leveling it out and it appears that the center of the fuel line is about at the bottom, maybe a little proud of it, of the hole 
this cavity here that it needs to go into. And we don't want that to rub against anything. So we may want to jump it up maybe just a little bit. This is where I want to make the fuel line parallel with the oil pan rail. Now I'm using my level because it's one inch wide and I can get an idea and it has this uh, square end on it that I can put up against the machined bell housing and get a pretty good idea of where the fuel line, if it was straight, where it would end up. So, I got some tape on here. I'm gonna get my marker and mark on this tape where the center of the fuel line would be. It appears that if we put our yardstick up against the block, back of the bell housing like that and to the fuel pump we get about 23 and a half inches maybe not quite 24. This is the pipe bender that we're going to use to bend this pipe with. Um, I got it at a yard sale so I didn't pay a whole lot for it so if it kinks it or something well either I'm not using it right or um, not a big loss but i was able to make this little jog here with it and it didn't collapse the pipe or anything with it so i'm feeling pretty confident today so we're going to try to put a couple bins and the first thing i want to do is mark my measurements on the outside of the pipe as you can see i've marked a place it's about 12 inches from the end of the pipe, which is the fuel pump. And then 90 degrees from that, I marked another place, about inch and a half from that. So when I bend a, nine, a 45 there and a 45 there, it should probably jump it over maybe an inch. So we'll do that and see what happens. Here we go. Line up with that. Before we make this next bend for the bring the forty five back, here's a, another hint. If you wanted the pipe to be bent level, if you see, you could rotate this all different directions. Well, we're wanting to be level here. If you line it up with the handle of this here bender, it's going to be level with where the bend is. So, probably a better angle would be like this. So if you get this level with this handle, it should make the bend 180 degrees from the bend you just made you just do at this point there's no use measuring it there's just uh either it's going to be right or i screwed it up and the pipe's junk so wish me luck I'm gonna need it. Is that you can't you can't get in there and check anything until you're completely finished. It's uh, so we got it got it in the latch. I got it leveled out. Gotta hold it to where both of these rollers hit it. Do a little help. Here 
we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, there you go. That's what it was looking for. It cracked it right there. So, we're done. <laughs> After many attempts of trying to bend this hard copper, well, I come to the realization that it's just not going to work. Every, it'll bend in some places, in other places it'll break. And I got a feeling that once I get this on the tractor, even though it may not have a leak when I put it on there, in service, it's not going to be able to take the just the normal vibrations of the tractor. So... I stepped up my search and I found -da, some steel tubing, half inch diameter. And I'll tell you, I'm not real crazy about it being in these short pieces. I can only get it in 36 inch pieces, but I found it in all places, Home Depot. Well. The bad thing about the Home Depot is, the nearest Home Depot, for me, is an hour to drive away. Hour there, hour back. So, I just, uh, basically, I sucked it up, got in the car, and me and, me and the little missus took us a little road trip last night. We went to uh, get us a couple of sticks of this, and in the process, using the home store, and now I got a few home improvement projects I need to uh, address. I got one of them done this morning, so, you know, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. But I did a test bend this morning just to see how this will bend, and, oh, man, this stuff bends beautiful. <laughs> uh, and, and it's plenty. The you may not be able to tell so much here, but it's thicker than the copper. So I'm planning what, what I'm planning on doing is on this end I'm going to make a swedge on the on the uh, lathe and heat that up cherry red and make it to where I can put another piece of this pipe make it swell it up to where I could slide it in there and then I could silver solder it. I got to silver solder this little fitting here on the other end and I could solder, switch that, and solder this together. Uh, it should be no difference than the fitting right there. So with that, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to start at the tank and go towards the front because I want this switch towards the front of the tractor. I think I can do, I believe I can do a better job fitting it that way than this way. I have it set up in the bending fixture and as you can see right here would be where the fuel tank would fit and has to kick out of that fender. The, the fender has that recess in there to keep you from you know hooking your shoe on it or whatever then it goes up here to the front now we want it to come out of that recess and jump over and go through that hole in the bell housing well if we wanted it to just go over you know square you know we have it set up correct for that it's uh it would uh go over this way and then come back out straight. The problem is, is we want it to we want it to do two things. We want it to go over and we want it to go down some. And it gets a little tricky right there. So what we'll have to do is up here we will need to turn this like this. That way it'll go down and over with this bin. So we'll give that a shot and see what happens. All right, we got our angle set up here. We'll probably tweak it just a little bit here, see what we got.
We'll do the 22 and a half. Yeah. And we're gonna, now that we've made that, turn that to get that other angle back here, we don't have to worry about the twist now, because if we, we did something other than just duplicating this bend, if we was to turn it now, that piece of pipe won't be parallel, the bends won't be parallel, this piece of pipe would be going down or up or whatever, so we want to make sure that we have this level no matter what the end of this pipe looks like. And we want to try to have everything all taken care of by the time it goes into the whoops, time it goes into the bell housing. So I'll re-level this. Hold on to it. Give it a little bit more than that. It's always a, the always famous last words. All right, put the 22 and a half to bring it back where it was at. All right. Let's see here, maybe. So you can see, get this out of the way. This is this angle here. When I have this, when I have this straight up and down, you can see how it's uh, all right. The first part of flaring is to deburr the inside of the pipe. It has a burr in there. It has a tendency to split. Now, I've never attempted to double flare a pipe this large, so this may be a dismal failure, but eh, ain't nothing we ain't done today. Screw up and have to get something like the copper pipe. Don't try to bend copper pipe. It's not good. The next step is to file all the burrs on the outside of the pipe. First thing you do is you line this this up to get the depth so you can do your double flare. And which is the same, this shoulder right here is the correct mount that's supposed to come out of this thing. So you put that on there and tighten up these clamps. Haha, <laughs> not today. <laughs> With the flare nut installed, have this at the proper amount. Tighten these up. Till they break. Nice. Damn it. All right, we're back after a minor technical difficulty. We have the pipe protruding the correct amount for the double flare. The uh, mandrel will fit down in there smooth. It's one reason why you wanna chamfer that. I'm gonna tighten this up. And we'll see what happens. Oh. Oh. Any good.
really don't want to break my tool any more than I already have. Let me think about this. Well, after it's all said and done, I ended up putting this in my hydraulic press and just using the uh, threaded part, the yoke, as a guide, and I pressed the uh, tubing down before I ended up breaking more parts of this um, tool. But uh, Looks like a pretty good flare, so I'm gonna go with it. I have the fuel tank mounted where it's supposed to be with the correct spacers. You know, there's supposed to be rubber blocks underneath them. And got the everything tight, the double flare flared, the end of it. it goes in there really tight against the I think I got the light shining on it just about right you can see where it goes around there makes a little double bend and it comes out right here so I'm going to try to swell that up to where I can solder it silver solder and then make the other piece and we'll see what happens. I got on the lathe and I made this out of an old bolt. It's a, I call it a swedge. Basically, it, the diameter is, this is the, a little less than the inside diameter of the pipe which is about three eighths and then this tapers up and then this here is a little bit more than a half inch in diameter and i heated the pipe up and we made it big enough to where the pipe another pipe could go over the top of it and then we'll just Braise it or silver solder it back together. I'm going to try to silver solder this on. I remembered the nut. So. We'll have to let that cool and see if it works. Well, we have the fitting on the end, the nut 
all the way into the fuel pump and fit in real nice into the weld in right here and I went ahead and took the fuel tank off again so we can get it in there because I had to loosen up the back line pull it back so I can get this one in here so now I'm going to mark it with a pin and I'm going to take it over and silver solder it together and see what happens well, I have it all in here. It's all installed. Bolted up here. Tightened up. All that. Sits down that groove really well. Nice 90 valves all in there. So here's the here's the acid test here. We turn the fuel on. I don't see any leaks there. like my ugly soldering job's holding. No leaks there. Go there. Turn on the... Hey, look at that. fuel tank bolted down I think I'll call this a success so basically I learned a lot on this little project had to do some some uh, tasks that I haven't done a whole lot the silver soldering I haven't done a lot of that in recent history, I've done a few times before. Um, it could look nicer, but gonna. It was a lot easier in two two pieces by far. Don't use copper; it won't work. 